a short, sharp stage, but in many ways the Queen stage on the AJ Bell Tour of Britain for 2022. A new race leader lining up at the seafront in red car with Sun God's Ben Perry in the red leader's jersey. Alongside him in the white jersey, his teammates Matt Teggart, and that team also in control of the King of the Mountains jersey, but with three jerseys to defend. Plus some wonderful land arts celebrating the local delicacies here in red car. And then Mick Bennett, the race director, releasing the attacks on kilometre zero. A prolonged series of attacks then. Steve Bassett trying to get up the road without Jake Scott in the hope that he might be able to prize the King of the Mountains jersey back his way. Once again on the offensive in the colours of human-powered health. Rolling terrain, difficult terrain, dipping down to sea level and back out again. Hard racing roads. Magnus Sheffield on the offensive. St. Piran also determined to try and get up the road. And then two riders, including Harry Birchill from St. Piran and Magnus Sheffield from the Ineos Grenadiers, off the front and building up a lead as they headed towards the first of three intermediate sprints in front of huge crowds at Whitby. On the punchy climb then to the sprint outside of Whitby, Magnus Sheffield improved his general classification standings by a further three seconds as they hit the first climb out of Robin Hood's Bay, a long, hard climb. Tom, Tom Pidcock accelerating from the peloton with his teammate Magnus Sheffield still off the front. Pidcock. The first big move from the leader of the Ineos Grenadiers and Ben Perry in the red leader's jersey forced to chase. Pidcock then pegged back by Mike Woods and Tom Globe from Trinity Racing as over the top Magnus Sheffield Still with Harry Birchill from St. Piran, went over the top with a small advantage and out onto the open moorland. The peloton splitting and then reforming as uh, Sheffield, still with Birchill, held onto their lead and headed inland then onto a series of climbs and into the North York Moors. On the second of the categorised climbs on Egton Bank, then the Danish team, Uno X, with their entire team hit the front. They caught Magnus Sheffield and Harry Birchfield. And on they went. A massive move from the entire team, splitting the peloton. And uh, Perry just about holding on over the top of the second King of the Mountains, the Egton Bank climb. Then the peloton regrouped, all back together again, over the top of Egton Bank and over the top of the North York Moors with Jake Scott on a bad day and getting dropped in the King of the Mountains jersey. Into the sprint in Stokesley then. The penultimate sprint of Omar Fraley just nipping off the front to improve his standings in the general classification by a further three points. And on the final categorised climb of the day to Carlton Bank, it was the Ineos Grenadiers joined once again by Una X that set the pace on the lower slopes. And then Omar Fraley and Tom Pitcock towards the top with Chris Hamilton from DSM and Mike Woods, the Italian champion, Filippo Zana, still there as well. Fraile could do no more, and Tim Pidcock attacked off the pace, followed by Michael Woods. Still not getting clear, Tom Pidcock. A two-kilometre climb, nearly 10% the average gradient, joined this time by two other riders, Dylan Turns of the Israel Premier Tech team, and another great ride from DSM's teenage rider from Scotland, from the borders, Oscar Onley. Over the top of the final categorised climb of the day, those three riders with a bit of an advantage, and then instantly working together in the final 20 kilometres of the race to try and hold on to contest the stage win. All three of those riders at 21 seconds evenly matched. It was at that point that Jake Stewart got onto the front with the entire Movistar team, or what remained of them, and brought them back bit by bit. That uh, three-man group had got a 40 second advantage but Jake Stewart shut them down and then shot past them an amazing ride from the Great Britain rider from Group Armour FDJ that set things up for the final sprint of the day at Newgate Bank and it was Gonzalo Serrano of Movistar who took the three bonus seconds ahead of Tom Pidcock then Perry back in the pack holding on to his virtual race lead by a thread and seeing it ride away from him Four riders then getting away, Dylan Toons once again, and Tom Pidcock with Sedana and Omar Fraile. Those riders coming into the last few hundred metres with Oscar Omar Fraile trying to set things up for Tom Pidcock, going deep into the sprint, but Sedano already with two top 
10 placings at the Tour of Britain in 2022. Out sprinting Tom Pidcock, just holding off the challenge of the Ineos Grenadier rider at the line to take his third professional victory in his career. And behind them, and several seconds down, a sprint for the minor placings between Sam Watson and Matthias Paskins of the Bingol Pal Sources team. The time gap there as Ben Perry crossed the line meant that he would lose the jersey on stage four. Victory to Gonzalo Serrano and Movistar. In the end, the winning margin as Tom Pidcock finished fast on the left-hand side of the man from Movistar. Half a bike length, he took the 10 seconds time bonus to add to his advantage in the general classification and moved into the race lead. Pitcock, second place, and more frustration for the Ineos Grenadiers, who are still very much in the hunt, though, for the overall. There's the winning margin, and uh, Serrano's reward for the stage victory, the ownership, at least for tomorrow, going into tomorrow, stage five of the AJ Bell Red Leaders jersey in the general classification. Half the race done then, and the GC now headed by Movistar. As Serrano takes over, then two riders from the Ineos Grenadiers still on the podium places with Tom Pidcock moving up to third and still in the hunt for the overall victory.